Hey everybody, this is Miss Stalling. I am so excited to see your beautiful faces again. Happy, happy, happy April. Like, wow, here we are, April in 2020. So we're about to get started on this super dope lit skill, which is Arthur's point of view. So when you walk away from watching this lesson, you are going to be able to be such a scholar and teach your family, your siblings, and the rest of the world about what an author's point of view is and how to identify within the text. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we begin, it's imperative that I go over some helpful tips. Now, I know that your parents have read this newsletter, but there's just a few things that I would like to go over. The first one is that I would like you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. The way that you are able to communicate with all the fifth grade teachers is by you subscribing. Secondly, make sure that you are completing all your YouTube videos from all the dynamic fifth grade teachers. That's right. I said they are dynamic. So even though they may not be your homeroom teacher or they might not be in your rotation for your core subjects, it is imperative, though, that you do all lessons from all teachers. So if you look here below, you'll see all the teachers that are for math, that are for ELA, that are for science. And then that is with our Mrs. Lady to be Miss Bennett. Third. Here's the thing, by watching these YouTube videos, you get to get a surprise. Now, of course, I can't tell you, but let me just say that it is totally worth it. So you want to make sure that you're doing all your YouTube videos so that you can get a surprise. Duh. And lastly, come on, make sure you drop knowledge. Now, all of you all talk about how us teachers are so old and we're out of touch. Well, show us then. Make sure that you connect with all your friends on all your different social media outlets. First, make sure you ask your parents if that's okay. But then go ahead and tell your friends to join in because the more learning is happening, the better our world is going to be, okay? Can you do that for me? Good. All right, let's go. So. In the words of Star Wars, you feel like giving up? Well, let's remember that we need to focus on how far we'll be next year. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but what we do know is, is that when we work hard now, that is what is going to prepare us for middle school. So do not give up in this lesson or any of the lessons you're watching because there is a bigger blessing for you in middle school. So the standard that we're going to be focusing on today is... Tennessee Standard RLCS.6, which says, describe how a narrator or speaker's point of view influences how events are described. Now, our learning targets. The purpose of a learning target is so that we know where we're headed. Where are we headed in our lesson? So our first direction in our lesson is, I can identify the, excuse me, I can define the meaning of Arthur's point of view. So first we need to be able to explain what does this term Arthur's point of view mean? Our second learning target is, I can explain the Arthur's point of view in an African folktale using a diagram in a sentence starter. So when we explain what the Arthur's point of view is in our African folktale, which is going to be a part of your independent activity, you're going to be using your tools such as your diagram and your sentence starter, which will be further explained in this YouTube lesson. Now, I want to go ahead and activate some prior knowledge. Now, I know I'm dealing with genius kids, so I know that y'all already know the answer to this, which is fine, but I still need to see your answer. So here I have posted up on the screen two questions, and I want you to answer those two questions in complete sentences, and I want you to go ahead and post it in a comment section below this video. Now, here are the two questions. The first question is, what is an author? What is an author? Okay. Second question, what is a point of view? What is a point of view? Now, make sure that when you post your answers, please follow what is on my screen. Number one, you need to state your first and last name. Who are you? There's like so many beautiful fifth graders. I want to know who you are so I can personally connect with you, okay? Secondly, you need to write your two sentences. Hence, complete sentences. We are in fifth grade, so your answers need to be in complete sentences. 
So I'm going to go ahead and give you some time and then we're going to keep on going. So I'm just going to just be nice and groovy. Yeah, my timer up here to help us and pace us, all right? I'm going to take about maybe 10 more minutes. And remember, if even if I go faster, please make sure you pause the video because you do need to answer the questions in the comment section, okay? You have about 10 more seconds and we're gonna move on. But remember, please pause me if this is not enough time because I do need to see your answers in the comment section with your first and last name. And one. All right, let's keep it going. So you probably have been wondering, I mean, it's just been burning in your soul. What is an author's point of view? Well, I am glad you asked. An author's point of view is how the author feels or about the topic slash situation. So when we are focusing on what the author thinks or feels about a topic or situation of the text, we can think about two terms. We can think about opinions and we can also think about beliefs. So with opinions and beliefs, this is what someone can think and feel about a topic or situation. Now, you can tell if a, if an author is either for or against something by looking at the following. So there's going to be four components that's going to make up our diagram that's going to help us in understanding what is the author's point of view. What is their point of view on a topic or situation? Are they for it and against it? And how are we going to know? So your first component is your problem slash conflict. That's just simply the challenge. What is the challenge that is within the text? Secondly, you have your character's actions, okay? What is it that the character is doing? What is it that they're doing or experiencing in the text? Third, here you have your character's feelings. What emotions is it that the character or characters are feeling in the text? And lastly, we have our fourth component. This is where we have our language slash dialogue. So I love this part because this is where we get to go on a we get to go ahead and search for these little signal words or clues of words that kind of gives us a hint to these other components. So the good thing about being a writer, you get to be creative and giving hints to your audience on what you might think or feel without all the way saying it. And so I'm going to show you through a practice activity later on in this lesson. So this is how we find the author's point of view. Now, when we want to explain the author's point of view, here we have a sentence starter. Now, remember, you can always create your own. I just created this sentence starter so that it can be a foundation for you, but you can create your own, not a problem. So this says, I think the author's point of view of blank is that he or she feels slash thinks blank about blank. I know this because in the text, the author blank. Okay. Now. You might be saying, whoa, Miss Stalling, whoa. All right, I'm sorry, okay. Well, here I have a recap. So we're gonna simply recap what is the author's point of view. Let's go ahead and recap it. Now, I'm gonna give it to you in latent terms. That means in a way that you understand exactly what I'm saying. So here we go. An author's point of view. It is what the author thinks or feels about a topic in a text. Now. There is a way that you can find the author's point of view in four components. The first component is a problem, the problem slash conflict in the text. The second component is the character's actions. The third component is the character's feelings. And the fourth component is the language slash dialogue. Now, in our sentence starter, this is what we have to start off as our foundation. I think that the author's point of view of blank is that he or she thinks or feels blank about blank. I know this because in the text, the author blank. Now, that is our recap of the author's point of view. Just want to put one little uh, pointer down here where it says think slash feels. You get to choose. You get to either talk about what you think the author thinks or what the author feels because that is what an author's point of view is. Now. 
here's some questions that you might have and i want to go ahead and address them because some of you all might be wondering this now is the author is is the narrator and arthur's point of view the same thing no it is not the same thing they're very similar but they're not the same thing when we think about the narrator we tend to think about who is it that's in the story right or the person who's telling it to a particular audience that uh when we think about the narrator's point of view it's what that narrator thinks or feels about the situation of text but when we think about the author's point of view the difference is we're thinking about the writer what does the writer think or feel about the situation not the person who's telling it or that's in the text okay next am i finding the main idea of the story if i'm looking for the author's point of view no 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 it is important though that you know what the story is mostly about. So yes, it's important that you need to know what the main idea is of a text, because you can't do anything with a story if you don't know the main idea. However, the process of finding the main idea and the author's point of view, they are completely different. They are not the same, okay? Now, lastly, will I have a practice activity so I can better understand the author's point of view? <laughs> Absolutely. Our next slide is going to be our practice activity. So let's go ahead. Okay, here we are. So whenever we are in our left column, okay, here you will always have three directions. It's imperative that you read the directions because soon in your independent activity, you are going to have to make sure that you read the directions in order to be successful in your independent activity. So the first direction says, read the text. What is the story mostly about? Second, it says, fill in the diagram, which is what we're gonna see uh, later on. Third, it says, complete the sentence starter. Now here you see this essential question. It says, what is the author's point of view of immigration? This is where we have our backwards planning. It's imperative that we know what is our essential question that we need to focus on. So when it's time for us to read, we kind of can figure out what information do I need to be storing that can help me to answer this essential question? So here I'm pulling up our text that we're going to read on today so that we can be ready. So I'm going to read as the Miss Stalin way so that we can answer our essential question. Here we go. In 1996, the day came when her dad decided to bring them to the United States. Leaving her town was hard, but it was important that her family stay together. When Sofia left Mexico, she had a lot of special friends and nice teachers. When she first came to the United States, she started at a new school in Chicago. She found care and company at the school among Hispanic people, friends, and her teacher. Miss Stalling helped her all the time. Sofia's education now is different from the one in Mexico. Here, she is studying in two languages. She feels very happy because she is able to communicate in two languages. In her case, speaking Spanish is an indication of her Me Mexican heritage. Speaking English is a symbol of her triumph and the struggles that she has as an immigrant in this country. So here we are going to pull up this chart. Now in this chart, this is where we are doing those four components. So I already have these done, but we're gonna slowly go over them, okay? So remember our four components that we went over. These are all the components that I have highlighted. All that we have to do is follow the order of our directions. First, we read the text. So what is the story mostly about? So I have to think about who or what is this mostly about? Well, it's mostly about a young girl by the name of Sophia, all right? What is the situation related with her? Well, I know it's talking about how she's leaving her home in Mexico and going to the United States. Okay, third, what is the most important detail that sums up what Sophia is experiencing? Well, I noticed that she is at a new school and she is learning different languages, which is impacting her growth. Now that I have this main idea, now I can go on to fill in the diagram. All right, so here we have this diagram. These four boxes represent your diagram. So now, problem slash conflict. What is the challenge? What challenge is present in this text? What's the challenge? What's the problem? Well, if we look within our text, it talks about how she is having to leave 
her home in Mexico and moved to the United States. So, excuse me, simply, we would state that leaving Mexico to come to the United States. Now, when you're filling out this chart, you do not need to write in complete sentences, but at least write in complete phrases so that you understand what you're writing. Next, our second component is character's actions. So what is it that Sophia is doing within this text that's going to help us to answer the essential question? I just can't write anything. There's plenty of action words and verbs in here, but are they connected to the essential question? You have to remember that. It's just helping me understand what the author's point of view is on immigration. So what is it that, what are her actions that will help me in understanding what the author thinks or feels about immigration? Well, one, I know that in the second paragraph, it talks about how she started a new school in Chicago. This lets me know that she is experiencing something new because Chicago is in a different country, which is in the United States. So I will go ahead and wrote that. Next, while she's in Chicago, well, what is she doing? Well, if she's out of school, what is she doing while she's at the school? Well, she's studying two languages, and I can find that within the third paragraph. Notice how I'm able to tell you where I'm getting my answers from. I'm not making any of these answers up at all. I have to make sure that whatever I'm writing in this chart, it is text-based, all text-based. So if you can support your answer in this chart and let us know, me, where this is in the text, that's not a correct answer or not the best supporting answer. Third category, thoughts, here to thoughts slash feelings. So here it says, found help and care at her school. So when we think of the thoughts or feelings, we're talking about what is it that she thinks about her, what is she thinking, what is here to thinking about these actions, starting a new school, studying two languages? What is she feeling now that she has moved from Mexico, which is her native home, to now the United States. What is she feeling? So it talks about in the second paragraph, it says that she found care from her friends, from her, her Hispanic people at this new school. It talks about how she's even happy in studying these two languages. When we look in the second paragraph, it says that she is very happy. Lastly, in our fourth component, this is the language and dialogue. Now, I love this part because the awesome thing about becoming a writer is you get to be so creative. This is where you get to use those concrete and sensory details that we learned within module two and three to really have the audience to figure out what do you really think about what you're writing. So when we're looking at the language and dialogue, there are signal words and there are hints that are embedded in a text that the author gives throughout. It's almost like the author is dropping little diamonds on what he or she thinks or feels. That is considered our language slash dialogue. So it's basically like we're going on a trip and looking for those signal words, moving through the paragraphs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the example of the language slash dialogue that I wrote was, was hard. This seems to me that this is some experience that is not like any other that the author wants me to know. Because if it wasn't, the author wouldn't have mentioned that. There are a lot of things that characters experience that may not be that difficult, but this one is. So this lets me know that this probably is very significant. So was hard. Another one that I wrote was she feels very happy. Well, I'm trying to find out what does the author think or feel? What is the author's point of view? What does he or she think or feel about immigration? Well, it says she feels very happy. This lets me know possibly what the author thinks about that character, which is going to help me to answer the essential question. And I could find this in the third paragraph. She feels very happy. I wrote it. Now, notice you're just writing the signal words that lead to what the author thinks or feels. So you do not have to write the whole quote. Notice it's just signal words or phrase. Lastly, a symbol of her. So if we look in this third paragraph, it says that speaking English is a symbol of her triumph and the struggle. So this is where we basically see that if something is a symbol, that means that this is a value. There is something that is important that has a lot of significance. And that is a hint about what the author thinks of feel on immigration. So there we have completed the chart. And now next here we have our here we have our sentence starter. So now that we completed the chart, here we have our sentence starter. So it says, 
I think the artist's point of view on immigration is that he or she feels that immigration brings new opportunities. I know this because in the text, the author describes experiences that Sophia went through that brought her happiness. So all I'm doing is putting this together. And if you need to see how to fill out that sentence starter, please go back to the following lesson, okay? So now we have done all of our steps. One, we read the text we talked about to ourselves orally, or you can write what you think the main idea is. What is the story mostly about? Second, we filled in our diagram, which is right here. Third, we completed our sentence starter, okay? Now, now what we're going to do is, here, we are going to keep calm because guess what? You have an independent work time. So get ready because this next activity is all you. Ms. Stalling is helping with nothing, okay? So here, this is what you're going to do. Left column, you're going to read the text, orally say it, or talk to yourself about what is the story mostly about. Second, you are going to fill out this diagram of your four components. Now, you need to make sure that your diagram is a full sheet, whether it's in your notebook or loosely sheet of paper. It should not be this small. That's just because of the space that I have that's limited. Yours should be very big. Lastly, complete the sentence starter. Here I have the sentence starter, but you know that with the sentence starter, you can also create your own. So please take this time to go ahead and complete it however long that you need. And I'm going to tell you what you should do when you're done, okay? Now, once you have completed the diagram and the sentence starter, make sure you take a picture of your work that has been done. And I want you to send it to my Google Voice number that is right here on the screen, 901-295-9316, okay? Make sure after you completed your diagram and sentence starter, you take a picture of your work and you go ahead and send it to my Google Voice number. I can't wait to receive every single student's work. All right, I wanna go ahead and thank you all for making it to this journey. I hope you all learned so much and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Talk to you later, bye.